Hello, my name's Lydia and I just finished my Masters at Imperial in Science Communication. This course is a real mix of the practical skills and discussion of the theory for effective science communication. I chose Imperial in particular because of the course. So this is one of the oldest science communication courses in the UK and it attracts really international people, literally from all over the globe. Um, and when I visited the Sherfield building, I just felt the staff were so welcoming and all the students were as well when I met them. And so the overall feel, even before I started, was very positive. During my application process, I did that as I was studying at Bristol still, so in my final year there. So it meant around sort of October, November time I was filling in the forms. And then I was offered an interview around February time. And this was all around the coursework and exam prep for my undergraduate degree. So it was a busy time, but well worth it. And on the interview day, I got to come into London to the department which is in the South Kensington part of Imperial. And there I met two of the tutors and the interview, obviously it was very challenging and I was very nervous, but it did become a, a discussion and a chat. And I got to see where the editing studios were, the radio studio and all the department and the feel of that as well. So it's very much the case of you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you and you want to feel at ease and they want you to feel at ease. And also actually they had uh, past students there. So I got to meet two um, current students actually and they were still studying and helping out on the interview day. And we had lovely chats. So when I went into the interview, I just felt super relaxed and ready to go and just show what I could bring. Um, so after that, I was offered a conditional offer which I met and then I did a bit of traveling that summer and arrived into London, settled into a new flat and then started the course sort of late September time. And then the issue was there was a kind of registration fee that wasn't really made clear initially. And that's something you have to pay if you're paying your masters in installments. So there's a government loan for British students you can get and that's released in thirds. So if you're doing that rather than paying the master's fee up front, you just be aware that there is this, um, there, this uh, sort of registration fee to pay. And now in light of the new application fee, it's something worth addressing. But in the first term, initially what happened was we'd be on campus, I think two or three days a week full time. And then we'd get to try out the practical. So we did some radio recording, both with a handheld device as well as in the studio and the same for TV as well. So there's a TV studio near the union and then we have our own radio studio, but there is one with the university as well. As well as all that practical work, we also did some group work and the group discussions. And the first term is very theoretical, whereas a full-time student, you're learning the philosophy of science and science in the media. And it was great, actually, because we noticed that there weren't any female, let alone non-white male philosophers taught in the syllabus. So when we raised this with our tutor, he was great at sort of opening the discussion and we actually got one famous woman called Sandra Harding on the reading list. So that was something positive that came out of that, just by using our voices and getting involved. Because you're at the level now as a master's or postgraduate student where you can hold these discussions, you're very much the informed as well as the teacher. And that's sort of part of the science communication, is it's not communications as the means to sort of like talk about things. It's very much how is this material presented in a way that can be understood, whoever, the, whoever your target audience is. And a lot of the course did revolve around that, learning who your audience is and targeting the material to that, both theoretically and also through amazing opportunities outside of Imperial as well. So because the course is so long, long standing, there's connections to the Science Museum, there's connections all around London, the Museum of London, BBC as well, and part of the course later on in the year during the summer term is to have a placement, and the idea is uh, you do it full time. I ended up doing mine part time so I could bal balance the NHS work, and that worked really well. I think one key thing to stress is that it will be tough if you haven't met people beforehand as you go into this course, but to just throw yourself in, just really enjoy what you can, get involved with societies when you can as well. Um, I didn't do any societies with Imperial as such, but I was involved with iScience, which is the science magazine that you might see around campus. And there's three magazines, one release per term, as well as a radio show every week and uh, an online website. Come and study here if it's what you really want to do and you want to thrive in every moment of every day, because it, it can't just be a career ladder step when there's the job market is melting, basically. It has to be something that you're passionate to grow into. And I think Imperial can support that when it sets its mind to it. 
and hopefully there'll be more diversity, there'll be more inclusivity with funding for students as well and it will continue to be a place that absolutely thrives. I'm, I'm working at the NHS now, so I'm in the COVID diagnostics lab and I'm also doing some freelancing which uh, was a sort of networking exercise from the placements offered to us by our tutor and um, even though I did one that was part-time I did interview with this other company and now they've offered me some work so it's worth you know throwing out your CVs it's definitely worth just seeing what your own strengths are as you grow so I've had some friends who've wanted to come here and dive into radio and then found out maybe it's not for them and love TV instead or maybe wanted to be journalists and then thought actually there's more to it than just the writing side what else can I do um, and really growing confidence you know I think you are you become a master's or you know any sort of postgrad study you become a, a real professional in what you do and it's about you enjoying it as well and contributing to the that field of knowledge and also communicating your work which is why I've loved this course so much um, so I'd say follow your passions, definitely look into the amazing courses offered at Imperial and don't be afraid to drive the change you want to see.